Okay, hey everyone, Dogen here. So today we are up at APU, it's a on Asia Pacific University. I used to work up here doing student recruitment, and in the past on this channel, I made a video actually talking about APU, how it's possible to go from an American high school, for example, directly to university in Japan. I really wanted to communicate that fact to as many high school students as possible that are interested in Japan. I would have wanted to know that when I was, when I was in high school. However, when we put that video out, of, of course, we naturally got a lot of questions from students that were interested in hearing, not from me, but from students that are currently studying here and from the faculty, the teachers as well. So we're doing another sponsored video with APU and we're going to be doing that today, hearing directly from the people that currently study and work here. And before that, I think it'd probably be best if we kind of review some basic information about the university. So let's do that now. APU is located in Beppu, which is in Oita Prefecture in Kyushu, the most southwestern island of Japan of the four big islands. There are about 6,000 students at APU, so it's kind of on the smaller end, especially when you compare it to a much larger American university or some of the larger universities in Japan. And the thing that makes it APU very interesting in terms of the general atmosphere is that half of those students, as well as half of the faculty for that matter, are from outside of Japan. So half of the faculty and half of the students are Japanese, and then the other half is from about a hundred or so different countries and regions outside of Japan. So despite the university being located in Japan, it doesn't really feel like a traditional Japanese university. It feels very international. You're constantly hearing different languages, seeing people from all different backgrounds, and it's very unique in that sense. You often f find yourself asking, am I, am I really in Japan right now? It almost feels like an airport more sometimes in terms of general feel than any specific place. I first met with three current APU students. Salome from Kenya is in her fifth semester in the College of Asia Pacific Studies, or APS. Sparrow from the United States is in his third semester in the College of International Management, or APM. Shirley from Indonesia is in her fifth semester, also studying in the College of International Management. Okay, and now we are joined by three students that are currently attending APU. This will kind of be the meat of the video. You guys can hear uh, directly from the source, so to speak. The, the first question that I have is, how did you end up in Japan and at APU specifically? So originally I was actually going to go to a university in the United States. Mm -hmm. I was planning to go to uh, University of La Crosse, if you know of that, it's in Wisconsin. Okay. But um, actually one of my online friends who was abroad in Britain at the time mentioned like, oh, you can go abroad, that's like an option, because mm -hmm. I was worried about affordability of college, actually. Right, yeah, and of course. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the States. Of course, <laughs> the States, yes. That's something that always comes to mind. You was like, it's actually a lot cheaper to go abroad. I yeah. didn't think that was an actual thing I could do. And mm. at the time, due to COVID, I was online for school, so I started studying Japanese as like a fun pastime hobby thing. Mm. Mm. And so from there, I was like, oh, maybe I'll look at Japanese colleges, you know, kind of like joking, like, haha, I might mm. not go type of thing. But then actually I was watching one of your videos mm. um, and from there APU was mentioned, I looked it up, APU saw the applications open, I applied, really loved the college, mm. loved the, like you said, the aspect of learning Japanese with an actual other major. Mm, 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 and so yes. then from there, the rest is kind of history and I came here. <laughs> okay. What do you plan on doing after you graduate from APU? And what are you studying to set yourself up for that goal? Actually, I'm very passionate about education. Mm -hmm. So I think growing up in a very small city in Indonesia, I can see a big educational gap between like just like the smaller cities and like the bigger cities. Right. So I think one of my long-term goal is to actually come back to Indonesia and start my own educational project. Mm -hmm. So currently I am studying business and international management. Mm -hmm. I'm particularly very interested in social entrepreneurship. Yes. So I think the seminars that I'm doing all kind of like targeted towards the social entrepreneurship. Okay. Yeah. In my home country, Kenya, mm -hmm. there's a lot of 
issues, particularly relating to women and women's rights mm. and um, education of women. Mm. So that's kind of more so what I'm interested in. Mm. And I also hope to pursue my postgraduate studies as well mm. in one of those areas and then hopefully be able to go up and set, um, go back and set up like, you know, an NGO where we can go and do community outreach for women mm. to educate them, to empower them. Yes, so that's okay. kind of where my interest lies. Mm. Great, thank you very much. Mm. Well, for me, I am kind of younger than both of you here. I'm still a little second year, first semester, so I don't have like the hard outline of where I'm going to go and what I'm going to do. Um, at APU, I've actually gotten really interested in accounting. I was thinking accounting, I'm like, oh, this just makes sense. I didn't actually even have to study. It just made sense to me. I was like, oh, if we're going to, you know, yeah. credit, debit, all that, it was just mm. like, oh, if we're doing stocks, this is just how it would work, I think. And it mm. just does. It's very logical, yeah. Yeah, just logical. It just made sense to me. Mm. And so from there, I was kind of like, okay, I'm definitely going down the accounting path. I love this. And mm. so from there, I still am kind of deciding if I want to do accounting within a Japanese com uh, company or mm -hmm. if I want to go back abroad to, say, mm. Canada or possibly like New Zealand or European mm. country. I'm still mm. very deciding on that because mm. I am only a second year I have. Right. A bit of time to mm. kind of get there. Mm. And mm. within like the accounting field, I'm still kind of deciding if I want to do like try to go more towards auditing or more towards like assisting accounting, mm. stuff like that. I'm still very much learning my way kind mm. of through it. From there, I'd like to transition to kind of what's a typical day at APU like for you? Kind of from when you wake up in the morning to when you take out the trash <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in, in the evening. Mm. I personally live with a roommate. Mm. So, you know, I'll wake up and I'll be like, we have to go, <laughs> you know? So then she's like, no, why are you waking me up? I'm like, we have to go, I checked yeah. the bus time. And then, you know, get ready, eat breakfast with her. We'll usually just have our usual morning conversation and mm. then get on the bus and on the bus is a wave of other APU students yes. also having woken up early and dressed and mm. everyone's like serious on their phone, like <laughs> school, <laughs> you know? And then um, I'll get to campus, I'll head to class. Mm. And I'll have my day of classes. Sometimes I will have four periods of classes. Sometimes I'll have one period of class. Mm -hmm. And after class, maybe I'll hang out with my friends for mm, some mm, time. Mm. Head to the library to do some work and mm. then take the bus back down. Mm, mm, mm. And then in the evening, usually cook dinner, do assignments, or maybe we'll go out, we'll go and eat in some of the nice places, mm. restaurants around Befu, mm, and mm. then come back and, you know, just kind of like finish up for the evening and then yeah, it's like that's basically my typical day. I don't know, what about you guys? So for me, I'm also downtown. I'm not in AP House anymore, so very similar experience there. Mm. But for me, I know I can't wake up. So <laughs> <laughs> I did not take any first period courses. <laughs> okay. Because I, I don't know, some people love waking up at like 7.30. I'm not that guy, I can't do that. I, mm. I, I need to sleep, you know, until like eight, maybe nine. Mm. And then from there, normally it's wake up. Uh, if I'm feeling like it, I'll normally have a little cereal maybe, or yeah. if I'm running, I want to have more sleep time. Get on the bus, come up, Lawson. Or we also have cafeteria up here in cafeteria. That's ice. true. Love cafeteria mm. food here. Yeah, that's quite so good. Stop by, grab cafeteria food, and then normally I'll go to class. Um, this semester I'm not doing Japanese. Actually, I'm focusing more on my circle activities. Actually, mm. and so I'll normally go to my like supply management class or whatever various class I have on the day. And then normally the afternoons, depending on the day, I'll either be working. And mm. for that, I normally do English teaching as well, a very similar experience. Mm. So I'll quickly go back downtown. And for me, I travel a lot for English teaching, so I might be going to Fukuoka one day. Or, really? Yes, it's very, very, very good. I very much enjoy it. Mm. And mm. then inside all that, fitting in assignments mm. and circle activities. Very busy. Yeah, very busy. <laughs> Same, very, very busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually kind of forced to wake up in the morning because I have like, four out of five days where I have like my first period. So it's kind and of like- And first period starts at? At 8.45. Okay. But um, usually we get to campus early because my roommate and I always love this. So in the morning, the cafeteria has like a special offer of the 100 yen breakfast. Okay. So you get like one rice, one miso soup and like three side dishes. And that's mm. what our breakfasts are like, kind of like every morning. So mm. we love just like, eating that and then after that classes classes and mm. then um, sometimes on several days I have like internships uh, after classes so mm. I, I will go to the tourist information center or just travel around Beppu mm. to like kind of like guiding people guiding tourists and then yeah after that a lot of meetings either mm. for like academics like group work and stuff or just like meetings for like circles clubs activities and mm. then yeah and then that's the whole day Wow. 
I think it, I, I love the uh, the hundred yen breakfast. Uh, it seems like a pretty decent meal. Yes. It's a very good meal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can save a lot of money that way. Um. So speaking of money, finances, um, of course, Beppu is much cheaper to live than well most most major cities anywhere in the world but certainly a lot cheaper than a place like Tokyo where, where Temple University is which is also a very good school but you can certainly save a lot more money in a smaller city like Beppu um, but I was kind of curious I hope this isn't uh, too personal but APU offers many different kinds of scholarships and I was curious about if, if any of you guys had received any scholarships of any kind if, if that's okay to talk about? Yeah, I think we're okay with that. I think that's okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, we're yeah. good. Okay, okay. okay. So for me personally, I got the 65% reduction scholarship, which okay. is offered by APU. There's multiple different tiers. That's just the one I got. Mm -hmm. And so already for me, I was already worried about finance. That's why I was going abroad. And then that on top, it really does help assist here. Yes. Because it's actually enough that I can completely support myself on my own. I don't need help from my parents. I don't need loans. I don't need anything like that of the sorts. Mm. It's very... Livable, which is very amazing to me. For approximately one year, the tuition at APU, if we're using the conversion rate from dollars to yen today, October, uh, November, excuse me, 2022, it's about $10,000 for the entire year. Now you're getting 65% so reduction yeah. off on, on that, so you're paying... I'm like around 3K-ish around there, yeah. and that's insane to me. That's yes. like cheaper than my local community college in the US. Like that's yes. very much an mm. insane concept to me that I can fully support myself on my own without loans or my parents or anyone to sit. Absolutely. And of course, on top of that, as, as we just mentioned earlier, Beppu is a very cheap city to live. Do you mind if I ask how much you're, you're paying for rent? For rent? Because I do also do room share. Um, uh, but it is a bit bigger because we want to do a 3LDK to have a bit more room with that. And um, for, I don't know if you guys know what 3LDK is, it's basically we have three rooms, a living room and a kitchen connected. Okay. And so for that, I pay, including electricity, water and everything, roughly Yolmon, which is around like $350? Yeah, maybe about $300. $300, yeah, around that every days. month. Yeah. Which again is very, very insane to me for mm. livability and everything. Yes, absolutely. And do you guys uh, pay a comparable amount for your rent each month? Mine's pretty similar. Okay. Yes. Same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we split it down the middle, so that's even cheaper. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 with your roommate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And are either of you receiving scholarships as well? Mm -hmm. Or? Uh, yeah, I'm actually very lucky to receive a hundred percent of the tuition reduction oh, wow. scholarship. So, yeah, that's no tuition fee. And I guess on top of that, I also receive some kind of like additional scholarship. So the tuition reduction only covers the tuition fee. But then for the living costs, there are multiple scholarships that you can apply once you enroll in the university, especially mm. if you're from second year onwards. Mm. So I, I applied to some, very lucky to receive some as well. So it kind of covers my li living costs as well. So kind of like saving money during university yeah. life. So that combined with the 100 yen breakfast, you're yeah. set. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow, that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so mine's actually pretty similar to um, Shirley's, I mm -hmm. can say. So I was also really lucky to receive the 100% scholarship. Okay. And on top of that, um, APU also has student support scholarships, specifically mm. called JASO. Right. Um, JASO is, of course, an organization on its own in Japan, and yes. APU partners with them to support students, maybe um, for academic excellence or just generally to support students who they feel maybe they want to continue having the same momentum they have mm. in classes mm. and extracurricular. So I also am able to receive that as well mm. and that really helps me because I'm able to pay my rent um, yeah. transport becomes cheaper yeah. you know just every small minuscule cost that you face day to day じゃあ今から日本語でちょっと話します答えは日本語でも英語でも大丈夫ですはいありがとうございますはい日本語を勉強してて APU前で少し日本語を勉強しました。全部たくさん勉強しませんでした。あの、そして初めあの、APU初めて来る時、あの、私はたくさん日本語を勉強しました。あの、APU は 
とてもいいの日本語授業があります。その授業の中で、うん、あの特別のあの教科書とか、うんうんうん、あの先生とか、うんうんうん、あの活動があります、うんうんうん。私の場合のなんかノアはなんか日本語での前に日本語べん全然あ勉強し立なかったです。あだけど日本に来てから初めて日本語を。そうそうそうと APU に入るから、うん、入ってから、入ってから、はい、ちょっとなんか日本語の勉強始めました。うん、そうとなんか日本語の言語の紹介もらいましたもん。うん、授業で、うんうん、どうやってカタカナとか、うん、漢字とか、うん、え漢字じゃなくてひらがな、がなカタカナ、あそうそう一番簡単。うん、<笑>そうそうそう勉強しました。シャリーの場合はどうですかあ私は APU の前に日本語はゼロです。あゼロだったんです、ね、ゼロゼロ。今も上手じゃない。いえ、上手。いえ。そう。そう、いや、I came to, like, before I came to APU, it was like zero, and then APU was kind of like the first time I have ever learned or even be familiar with Japanese as a language. うんうんうん、so, yeah, and then after that, A lot of experience, just like maybe from outside of classes activities, like you、mm. get to meet people living in AP house with like Japanese students, or、mm. like doing activities like teaching assistant or like resident assistant, where you can meet your Japanese co workers. So、mm. I think that really helps a lot in like improving、mm. Japanese language. So, Spero さんは、あれ、APU に入って今何年でしたっけあの今私はあの2年生1学期です。いやすごいなだって日本語が専攻じゃないのに普通にこうやって話,す話せるから、うん、僕の場合は日本語が専攻だったんだけど<笑>多分こうやってそのカメラの前で話せなかったと思うんだよね<笑>緊張しすぎて<笑>とても緊張するかなでもだからもう逆にそういうそのビジネスケースコンペティションとかの経験が、うんまあ、こういう時よくなんかこう。使えるっていうか、うんうん、その緊張せずに話せるじゃん。<笑>でもあのケースカンペティションの時、それは英語でしますか。英語でも人の前に立って発表するじゃん。うん、そうそうそうだからその自信が自信が持っていました、うんうんうん。とても普通のことになりました。うん、そうだよね、うんうん。だからなんかこう。日本語が完璧じゃなくても、うん、それ以外のスキルを身につけることで日本語もよりこう自然になるっていうか<笑>もっと使えるっていうか、うん、素晴らしい<笑><笑> Thank you all very much for your time I can see a bright future for all, all of you already so I can't wait to see what each of you do in the future and again thank you Thank you, thank you so much for having us Next, I spoke with Professor Akiko Honda, the director of APU's Center for Language Education. Professor Honda has been teaching Japanese at APU since the university opened in April of 2000. Hi, so now I'm going to h o n d a s e n s e i の研究室に来ています。と主に APU の日本語教育について、まあ、質問をしたいと思うんですがえまず一番最初に、えっと、簡単に自己紹介をしていただいてもよろしいでしょうか。はい、はいえー、私は本田明子です、えー、と自己紹介する時はいつも学生に自己紹介する時は皆さん「本田知ってますか?」と聞くと大体,大体みんな知ってるっていうのであの、はい、本田有名な車の会社ですね。<笑>私の名前はホンダです。でも私の車はトヨタです。<笑>というと大体みんな一度で名前を覚えてくれます。はいはい。はい、<笑>えっと先ほどちょっと話してたんですけれども、はい、もうえっと APU 開学した時から日本語を教えてるんですね。APU で。はい。あの APU が開学した2000年の4月からずっと日本語を教えています。はい。と僕の視聴者の中に、まあ、もちろんその日本語を勉強しているが、えー、人が<笑>多いんですけれども APU で日本語を勉強したいって思ったら、まあ、どういう勉強を皆さんしたりしますえー、とまず、まあ、授業があの英語基準で入学すれば、はい、日本語の必修のクラスというのがあって、はい、それはあの
、えー、と16単位分はあの必修で日本語を必ず勉強しなければいけないんですけど、うんうん、それが終わった後中上級とか上級とかっていうあのさらに上に行くあの授業のクラスもありますし、うんはいえー、その他にもあのいろんな漢字だけを集中して勉強するクラスとか、うん、そういうクラスがあるので、うん、自分でま,あまず授業その自分のやりたいクラスを取るというのが、うんうんというのがありますし、うんうん、でそれ以外にもあのサルクというところで、はいはいはい、あの自言語自主学習センターというところで、うん、会話の、えー、練習の相手をしてくれたりアドバイスしてくれたりする先輩がいるので、はいうん、そこに行ってあの練習したり。うんうんあとはもう本当に、えー、APU にいるとあの生活の中で例えばアルバイトに行ってあの、うん、上手になるという人も多いですし、はいはいはい、<笑>これが大きいと思いますね。はい、僕もあの東京の大学の方に留学したんですけどその時にインターンシップをしたんですね。やはりその、まあ、授業の中でももちろんたくさん学べるんですけれども、まあ、当然その環境を変えてこれをどうしても日本語でやらなければならないってなったらまた授業では絶対できない勉強もたくさんあると思います、うん、英語基準で APU に来た時は、うんまあ、その必須でこれだけ勉強しなければならないっていう日本語の授業があるっていうふうにおっしゃってたと思うんですけど、はい、その授業が終わったら、まあ、大体どのぐらい会話できますかあとこう漢字はこのぐらいできますとかっていうのは、えっ、ー、と漢字は三百字ぐらいですね。はいうんはい、あのあすみません、全部終わった後は五百字ぐらいかな。はい。はいうん、あで、あのなんですけど、えっ、ー、と五百、はい、字と言っても、はい、あの日本のその中学生が終わるまでに勉強する漢字が二千二百字。ちょっとあるんですけど、うんうん、その漢字の中の500字っていうとちょっと少ないなっていうイメージがあるかもしれないんですがその2000何百字の中にはものすごく簡単な漢字も入っていて、うんうん、でも AP で勉強するあの500字の漢字の中にはすごく簡単な漢字はもう日常生活で覚えられるからというのでやって入っていないこがあるので、うんあはい、かなりあの500字でもある程度のところまではできます、うんちょっとあまりこう高度なインターンシップとかっていうのは難しいですけど、うんうん、あの普通のアルバイトだったらあの問題なくできるぐらいのレベルになるという感じです、うんうんうん、もう一つ僕いつも視聴者に言っているのは日本語で何がしたい、うん、それをこうそれが自分で分かったらその答えが出たら、うん、それに向けてのその勉強計画を作った方がいいと思うんです。まあ、自分に合った計画をできるだけ早い段階で立てた方がいいんじゃないかなと思うんですね。で、そういった意味で、まあその APU でできるまあその書道の授業であったり、ビジネスをビジネスを勉強できる授業とか、まあその選択できるのはすごくいいなと思うんですね。そうですね、うん、であの日本語の,そのプログラムの中でも、はい、あの自立学習といって自分で自分の勉強の仕方を、はいうん、あをきちんと計画できるっていうことも、うん、あのそういう力をつけるということを一つの目標にしていて、はいはい、自分であの1週間どんなことをど,のどういう時に日本語に触れたかとかそういうような振り返りをしてで自分がどのくらいそ,日本そこでど,どういう日本語をあの覚えたかっていうのなことをあの一旦考えてで自分がじゃあどういう形で日本語をあの伸ばしていけるだろうっていうことを自分で決めるとかっていうそういうこともあのクラスの中でやっていたりしてでそういうふうに自分で選んであの自分の勉強の仕方をあの見つけていけるっていうのはとてもいいことだと思います。ですね。あのうん、前にその卒業した学生にインタビューに行ったことがあって、はい、でそこでその学生が言っていたのが、はい、もし自分が日本に留学するということを考えた時に、はい、日本の他の大学に行っていたら、はい、その自分の国と日本っていう,こう二項対立二つの,あの、はいえー、意識というか、うん、そういう考え方になったと思うけど、うん、APU に行ったら
、えー、日本は80の国の中の一つで、はいはいはいはい、自分の国もその中の一つで、うん、っていうそういう意識ができたっていうのが、うん、あの他の大学じゃなくて AP に行ってよかったところかなと思ってるっていうのがある学生があの就職の,あの面接の時にあの会社の方にあの質問、うん、会社の方はもう質問することがなくなってしまって、うんうん、<笑>それで「あなたは自分を動物に例えたら何だと何、うん、と言いますか?」っていう質問をしたそうなんですね、はい、そしたらその学生が「ゴキブリです」って<笑><笑>、ねはい、えって相手が言ったらあの「世界中どこに行っても生きていく自信があります」素晴らしいですね。<笑>はい、えっとでは、えっとまあ、APU の日本語教育についていろいろ多分皆さん、えー、学べたんじゃないかなと思いますのでここで終わりにしたいと思うんですが、えっと、本田先生ありがとうございましたあ,ありがとうございましたはいすいません Finally, I sat down with Professor Sarek Meridamov, the Dean of Academic Affairs. Originally from Kazakhstan, he joined APU in 2009 after studying and teaching at the Nagasaki Medical School. As the Dean of Academic Affairs, he oversees APU's academic programs. You can come to study at APU at an undergraduate level, even if you've never studied Japanese before, which I think is, of course, fantastic because many people, my past self included, Would have loved to go to a university immediately after graduating from high school, but I just assumed that if it was a Japanese university, I would have had to know at least some Japanese. But of course, at APU, you can know no Japanese and come directly here. Right,、uh, Dogen, you correctly mentioned that、uh, Japanese language is a big barrier for international students to come to Japan.、Mm-hmm. But APU, as a, a few other、mm-hmm. universities in Japan, they provide o p p o r t u n i t y to study、mm-hmm. a bachelor degree and a graduate degree without knowing the Japanese language. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And、um, for、um, bachelor degree students, they could study Japanese、mm-hmm. while they entered at APU. It's very difficult to even compare APU to, well, not only other universities in Japan, but Even if you're just interested in studying Japanese, it's such a unique environment for that particular thing as well. Yes, exactly.、Uh, studying Japanese、um, it's,、uh, will be connected to the final goal.、Mm-hmm. So many students come to Japan. Maybe firstly, they come because they're interested in Japan,、mm-hmm. but gradually they start to think about what they should do after the graduation. The percentage of students who get a job after graduating at APU is、mm-hmm. mm-hmm. quite high.、Mm. It's at average more than 95%、mm-hmm. of students who graduate from APU,、mm-hmm. they find a job.、Mm-hmm. And many of them, they find a job here in Japan.、Mm-hmm. That's why learning language,、mm-hmm. Japanese language,、mm-hmm. at the same time, they know their own native language and、mm-hmm. maybe a couple of other languages.、Mm-hmm. So it, it b e c o m e a huge、um, opportunity to them to be hired by Japanese c o m p a n y who are looking for finding connection、mm-hmm. uh, with、um, countries outside of Japan. One of the great experiences that I always had here was going to the gym. And it was just so interesting because there were students from all over the country, and they were all friends, not because they were trying to learn English from each other or learn Japanese from each other, but because they all had this same kind of、uh, hobby. You, there's much more to learn from that kind of、uh, relationship, I, I believe, as well, in terms of the language element as well. Right,、mm. yeah, exactly. And、um, I think learning language is one part、mm-hmm. of living in Japan, and another one to understand the culture.、Mm. APU is quite、uh, t a k e this part very seriously.、Yes. And for all newcomers, first year students, APU p r o v i d e opportunity to live in an APU house. And、uh, APU house, I think it's a first step for them to understand and learn,、mm. uh, like.、Um, Life culture at Japan. APU is going、mm. to build a new mm, mm,、uh, mm. APU house. It's a very interesting concept because、mm. we have a new college to be established here at APU、mm. from next year.、Mm. And in line with this one, a、uh, new APU, APU house with、mm. a number of beds, I think about 260 new、okay. beds.、Mm. And it is a four floor building. Mm. Mm. And the entrance to that building would be from the fourth floor. And design is quite interesting. It's a very good, nice view to the、mm-hmm. sea and、mm-hmm. to the nature.、Mm-hmm. 
and a lot of uh, rooms where students could communicate. Mm. And as you mentioned, communication between students is very important. And why uh, APU is going to establish a new college? Yes, Because yes. the current situation in the world is not so stable. Mm -hmm. So sustainability is becoming one of the key words mm -hmm. of uh, making and keeping this world in a more safe manner, mm -hmm. more peaceful manner. Mm -hmm. And a new college um, would incorporate the concept of keeping the world more sustainable, be more friendly to environment. And at the same time, we would like to increase uh, tourism opportunity, mm -hmm. like international uh, tourism. And uh, tourism is another way mm. to sustain uh, local communities, mm. like to share their culture, Mm. Right, and invite more people from abroad. Mm, mm, mm. Absolutely. Now, uh, Japanese companies, they are looking for um, very smart yes. and uh, creative individuals. Mm. So I think the campus uh, which we have at APU provides opportunity for students to explore more about their own individuality, mm. at the same time to understand different cultures, because mm. we live in a, a world which become more open to yes. other societies and countries. And mm. this is a place where you could practice mm. uh, how you could survive in this mm. uh, world without borders. Yes, absolutely. And I think that this is actually a really good example. I'm an American YouTuber living in Japan. Seriku Sensei is from Kazakhstan teaching in Japan. Right. And we're, we're talking about a Japanese university. Yes. <laughs> and of course, this is indicative of what's happening in Japan at large. Exactly, it's a very good example, mm. right? Maybe we didn't imagine this situation yeah, I, I, several years ago, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, that for anyone uh, among of your viewers, mm -hmm. so if you are interested in Japan, uh, your dream maybe is not so, not so difficult to achieve. All right, well, I want to say thank you again to Seriku Sensei, the academic, uh, the Dean of Academic Affairs at APU. Thank you so much for your time and um, is there anything else that you would like to say to any incoming students? Right, yes, uh, thank you too uh, for a wonderful interview. And I would like to say to your viewers, if uh, you would like to know more about APU, we have a weekly uh, workshop uh, which you could attend online and you would know much more information about APU in English. Okay, great. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you too. Okay, so that's the video. I hope that by hearing from the students that actually study here, as well as the faculty that teach here, you've been able to get a better idea of what APU is actually like. I'll be doing a webinar with APU in the near future. You can find some details down below. But I want to say thank you to APU again for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you guys again soon. Sayonara.